Hi everyone, and today I'm going to show you four cool new PowerPoint tools that have come out in the software in the last several years that you can use for your presentations today. Hi, my name is Camille Holden and I'm a PowerPoint expert and coach. I help busy professionals save hours and gain peace of mind by helping them to master the software that they use every day rather than letting the software be the master of them. Now, PowerPoint comes out with new features all the time that you may or may not be aware of. If you have the Microsoft 365 subscription, that means that you're getting updates constantly to the software and some features may have slipped under the radar. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the top tools that have come out in recent years that I think are amazing and that will make any presentation that you have better. Okay, so what are the cool new PowerPoint tools? Well, we have four of them, Morph, Zoom, Designer, and Stock Images, and I cover all of these uh, in depth in this video, but Morph in particular, if you want more information on, I cover in depth in a separate video all about Morph. So I will include a link to that in the description box below. So let's look at each one of these, how to use them and why they're amazing. The first one is Morph. Morph essentially is a slide transition that makes it look or, or replaces a whole bunch of regular PowerPoint animations. And so it can make you look like a PowerPoint genius and a wizard at animations uh, with just one click of a button. So it's really amazing. Let me show you some examples of how to use it. First off, let's say you had a slide with three content boxes. Here I have a SWOT, SWOT analysis. It can be anything. And if I wanted to fill in the names of each one of these, I could simply click to the next slide and the words would all fill in very easily, smoothly, and uh, seamlessly. If I had a different version of the example, but I wanted to highlight a certain element like uh, the strengths, I could pull this up and talk about strengths and I would highlight this one box, it would grow, etc. What if I went back to the table of contents slide and I just want to talk about each one individually? I could do this, highlight and fade the other elements, highlight and fade the other elements, etc. and keep going. So that is very easily done in Morph and let me show you exactly how. I will walk you through this particular example. The first thing you need to do is duplicate the slide. So you can hit either Control D on your keyboard or you can right click and select duplicate slide. Either way, you wanna make sure you have a copy of this slide so that PowerPoint knows that you are going to uh, be just manipulating these objects, sorry, the ones on this slide, and that they are the same intended objects as these ones. So what you need to do, it's very, very simple. You can just uh, manipulate whatever it is you want about these shapes. You can do size, you can do background, outline, uh, effects, font size, font color, shadows. There's so many things you can do to change this shape. And let me just go ahead and just uh, add some just for fun to show you what it, what it looks like. Shape, I'm gonna give it, uh, let's see, I'll give it a blue outline and I'll make the fill orange. Um, and let's make the outline a little thicker. So there you go, this, you know, we're really changing this a lot and we could even take these three and we could make the fill uh, some sort of a darker gray to fade them out, right? And next up, I am going to actually um, edit this text a little bit. I'm gonna reduce the size and I'm just going to go ahead and type it in, strengths, right? Hit enter and I'm going to uh, make the font size, let's say 10, not bold. And I'm going to get in some dummy text Right, this is dummy text. You don't need to know that formula, but it's a very easy way for me to get some dummy text. Hit enter, and I'm going to hit enter. And now I have a new text box. It's the same text box, but I have just adjusted it. And you know what, we have a little bit more room, so why don't we make it a little bit bigger? So this is the new version of this previous slide. So all I need to do to seamlessly transition from these two and make these things grow and shrink and fade, etc., is I will just go to the transition tab and select the morph transition. And it gives you even a preview of what happens and how it will look. So this is really handy. And just like any transition that you see out there, um, you can play around with the effect options. There are a few of these in morph that are very specific. Uh, you can play around with the timing, etc. And I won't go into depth because I made a special video just about morph, but that is just um, a really quick dive into how to use the morph. Now, if you don't see morph or any of the features I cover in this video, make sure you go to your account uh, tab and check that you have any office updates so that you have the latest version of PowerPoint so that you are really seeing all of these features. So that is a very, very easy way to seamlessly make this amazing transition. I'll show you in full screen what it looks like when we go from this over to this. So again, 
that, that would normally be so many animations in one slide. And uh, now it does mean we have more slides. We have two slides instead of one, but it is, it is all managed from, from uh, within the transition of morph. And so that's amazingly, uh, amazingly useful for PowerPoint. So next up we have Zoom. And Zoom is essentially an automated interactive table of contents that gets created directly by PowerPoint uh, using hyperlinks and, uh, and sections or, or different slides in your presentation. So here I have an example of one I've created already. This is called a summary Zoom. Um, and I have essentially just created a, um, a, a, a zoom effect and you'll notice it's uh, clickable when I hover my mouse over each one of these I get a little hand right which means that I can click on it so what happens when I click on designer that takes me to this part of the presentation where I talk all about designer and if I were to go to next slide next slide and the final slide when I click back at the end of this normally we would just go to the next section but because I created a section zoom if I click to go to the next slide, it will actually take me back to the table of contents. Now you can unselect that feature um, up in the Zoom tab, I'll show you in a minute, but that's a really handy way to allow you to navigate to and from different parts of your presentation really easily without creating any hyperlinks yourself. It's just the click of a button. So let me show you how that works. If we go into the uh, insert tab, you'll notice there is a little zoom feature here. So zoom is misleading. It makes you think that you're sort of zooming in and out of stuff, but it's really just sort of uh, going in and out of parts of your presentation. So if you have a blank presentation, you most likely will have section zoom grayed out. And that's because section zoom uses sections. These are sections in PowerPoint. So these are sections I created. It's very easy to create a section. You just right click anywhere in this gray area and say, add section, type a name, hit okay. And it will create that section for you. So, um, so Zoom essentially goes to the presentation and sees what the sections are. And when you n then have a section, it will allow you to click section zoom, and then you can choose the sections that you have in your presentation. And what it does is it takes the first slide in each one of the sections. So you'll notice one, two, three, four, et cetera. And when you hit insert, it will basically insert these as images, but they are sort of zoom images. Now, the first thing you may notice is that the, they are kind of hard to see. So you can absolutely play around with the formatting of these in a similar way that you would uh, shapes or images. So if I just rearrange these a little bit, bring them up here, um, I can add borders if I want. I can add effects like regular shapes or images um, and make it a little bit easier to see. And you will also notice, by the way, these little elements, um, they won't show in presentation mode, but when you click on them, they tell you which slides are being uh, counted as part of each one of these sections. So this is a way to very easily create a section zoom. And so when I go into presentation mode, you'll notice it does the same thing as I had previously, creates a, a clickable link that jumps to that section and it kind of zooms into that section and you go through that section, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so that is um, that is a section zoom, very easy to create. And you can also create, this one is actually slightly different. It is a summary zoom. A summary zoom is is very similar. The only difference is it allows you to um, to pull slides from uh, outside of the section. So it, you, it allows you to jump to any present uh, any slide in your presentation that you want. So it's really up to you, um, really up to you, uh, you know where where which slides you take. Um, the other difference is when you select insert sum summary zoom and you say insert, it will actually uh, create a new slide and insert it way up here and create a new section called summary section. So for most people, you know, unless you really start your, your presentation like this, um, you know, you don't really need to be having this as the first slide. So you can actually move the slide around and, and uh, adjust things. Um, but just as a heads up, it will create it up here at the very top. So you can definitely delete it or move it further down in your presentation, which is what I've done here. Now, the other thing you might notice, the final thing I'll share here about Zoom is that I have a different image thumbnail. Um, the nice thing about keeping the same image thumbnail is if I were to, for some reason, let's just say I want to change this to purple, You'll notice if I go back here, oh, it changed as well. So this is really nice because it keeps a, a sort of a link within the presentation and it remembers or it goes back and pulls from this presentation, from this slide, the exact image. So it will always be the same and you don't have to worry about reinserting it, et cetera, et cetera. So that is a nice thing about keeping the images. However, um, 
sometimes, like in this case, it may not be the most attractive thing or you may want to show something actually quite different from the first slide. So you can actually go and change. If you go click on the zoom tab, you can actually change the image, right? Change image and go pick one that you have on your computer. I created images to uh, to be my, my sort of section zoom thumbnails. And so you can create any image really, it can just be text if you want, um, like I have here, mostly text, or you can have a picture icon, anything you want really can be considered uh, the picture. And so you can insert it and it will replace the thumbnail. So just, you know, be aware that that's an option that you have. And there are a few new other features that you can play around with here um, to, you know, to adjust the effect Effects of your zoom so feel free to play around with that and get get some more ideas of how to use zoom next up we have designer designer is a really great way to get inspiration for me it's mostly about inspiration but some people are very happy with the results depending on what your content is and you actually can use the slide as is uh, it uses powerpoints ai microsoft's ai to re sort of read through your presentation and come up with design ideas for you so if you go up here to the home tab, select design ideas, it will generate design ideas for you. Now, because in this presentation, I once clicked on an, on one of the suggestions that had yellow in it. Now it's pulling all the yellow. Uh, so just be aware, it, yours will probably look fairly different. You'll get a lot more design options. If I click on see more design ideas, it will actually pull a whole bunch of different ones. Um, and you'll see that, you know, you can even have all these cool effects added to your pictures and it's just done automatically for you. Now, keep in mind, if you select one of these, anything that's added by PowerPoint as part of designer cannot be clicked. You'll notice I can edit the text and I can edit the picture, but I cannot click on these shapes. So anything that gets added by PowerPoint, see I'm trying to click, uh, will not let you um, adjust it. So that's just something to keep in mind uh, that happens when you use designer. And PowerPoint will essentially be looking at a few things. It will be looking at the placeholders. So if you built a custom template and it doesn't have um, layouts with the standard placeholders, these are these dotted dotted lines, uh, then it's possible that that designer will not be able to come up with a suggestion for you. But if you are using a sort of a slide with generic, you know, placeholders, then PowerPoint will be able to sift through it and come up with some ideas. So you'll notice for this slide, it's a pretty boring slide. There's not much going on, but even with this one, it can come up with some interesting ideas. This is already a better look. This is already a better look. Maybe we want to center align the text or we want to do a few other things. Looks like it's using smart art to do that for us. Um, but here already, you know, we're already a step ahead. So this may not be the final look that you're going for, but it's a good first start that helps you come up with different ideas and uh, think of different ways to lay out your content. There we have that again. Um, finally, in this one, even with a ton of text, you know, I know some, this is not the ideal slide, I, but I know a lot of people are forced to put a lot of text on their slide. Uh, anyone in the legal profession, you know, typically it's just text heavy. This gives you at least already a few more options for how to lay out your content, how to make it look a little more uh, professional. This gives you some ideas. Oh, hey, I could use icons. Okay, maybe we need to reduce this text, but some icons could, could make things look a little bit better. That's obviously not going to work. But again, it gives you some some ideas to go from and already start on a better foot. Now, if you don't see design ideas or designer is not working for you, uh, it may be an issue with the, the custom template that you're using. It could also be your corporate firewall. If your organization has a very heavy firewall, it might block this design ideas because it uses the web and, uh, and some firewalls uh, don't like it. So talk to your IT department if that's an issue for you. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is um, stock images. So, oh, you'll notice design ideas did not work here. And you know why? Because this layout basically has nothing on it. So it, PowerPoint is not really able to read it because it's just a blank layout that I've added text to. Uh, it's not using any placeholders. So that's something that might happen to you. So just keep that in mind. Now, stock images uh, is essentially a, a da database, a library of free uh, images that you can download into your slides and use in your presentations. And I love, love, love it because it allows you to pull directly within PowerPoint and not have to go to the web, not have to purchase pictures. Um, they're just available for you here. So if I go to the next slide and I click on one of these icons, it would be this one I need, the stock images with the little looking glass. You can also find it up here under insert pictures and stock images. So if I click on this, it will open up 
the, the, the library of images I can use. As a Microsoft 365 subscriber, I have access to this full library. Now, make, please make sure the, the license only allows you to use these images within Microsoft, so Office Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, um, but you are allowed to use any and all of these however you like. You don't have to attribute the attribute it to the author. You don't have to uh, worry about copyright. So this is really great. You can search. You can go by categories, um, but you can also just just start looking. You know, if we're talking about greenhouse gases, like this slide is, uh, maybe we want to pick this um, image here, and PowerPoint will insert it for you directly immediately, and it's now available to use. So that's really helpful, really handy. I love this feature. And, you know, if you don't find the pictures you need here, then you can look elsewhere, but at least it's a great first step. Uh, it makes it super easy to find images very quickly. Now, another thing I want to point out with stock images, you actually also have other other types of uh, imagery you can add into PowerPoint. We have icons, we have cutout people. This is really helpful if you, you need sort of generic people um, for, you know, examples or for a, a fake team slide. You just need faces here. So that's a really helpful resource. They have stickers, which is typically more for, for kids. Uh, we also have videos. So awesome videos. These could be great backgrounds um, to add to your presentation, illustrations, and we also have cartoon people, which would also be more for kids, um, but also great illustrations illustrations in general if you want to um, to add a different sort of look to your to your stuff. It's kind of like icon, icons meets illustrations. Um, so please, please dig around these, look around them. They're super cool, very helpful to use, and they're being updated, added to all, all the time. Now, one final thing I want to point out, um, if you want to put the image in the background, instead of inserting it from scratch here, going to crop it, sending it to the back, et cetera, you can simply right click, hit format background. And even though you might not think you get an option here, if you go to insert, you can actually go to stock images and insert an image directly from uh, within the format background dialog box so or pane. So it's a very easy way. Um, and let's say we want to talk about how the glaciers are disappearing. We can add this image to the background and it's just added automatically. And then you can make any changes to the content on top of that. So that's just a very handy feature. Um, makes it really easy to insert slides in the background. Keeping in mind, the only thing you can't insert is videos. Um, the uh, And yeah, videos is not an option here. So they don't want you putting videos in the background. I'm not quite sure why but that's still a limitation within PowerPoint. So play around with the images that you have in stock images here in PowerPoint and uh, make sure that you're checking this out first before you're diving into page upon page upon page of uh, free images or worse, going to Google images and finding terrible or images that aren't uh, available for you to actually use legally in your presentation. So those are the four cool new PowerPoint tools I think everyone needs to know in PowerPoint, whether you've been using it for five years or for 25 years. There there are plenty of things being added to PowerPoint every day, so definitely check it out. Make sure that you're looking into the software when you get new updates. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up or let me know in the comments down below. Do you have any questions or any other tools that you think are really awesome in PowerPoint that have just been released? Let me know. For more videos like these, please go on over to the ASAP YouTube channel or for more things PowerPoint related, feel free to head on over to my channel at Nuts and Bolts Speed Training. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Thank you.